the pleasure of introducing Eli Porat. Eli, even in those times, is a bit remarkable because uh, he did his uh, high school and university and computer hacking in a serious way, all at the same time. And uh, so since then, he's continued uh, studying and uh, being a professor of computer science, and he's going to talk about computer science algorithm, naturally. <laughs> so there he is. OK. Uh... Then I'm going to, to walk about a work that I done with uh, Oad Lipsky, a student of mine. Uh, is now at a checkpoint. He uh, done it when he was at Bar Ilan University. Uh, this is on the sketching of M in distance with arrow, with arrow coaching. The other uh, click. OK. Then I start, I have two definitions. I will start from the first definition, which is uh, communication complexity definition, uh, but it isn't regular communica communication complexity, it's one-way communication complexity. Uh, let's assume that we have uh, two persons, Alice and Bob. Alice uh, is on Earth and Bob on the Moon. Uh, and now, as you know, if Alice is on the Earth, it, Alice uh, has more power, it, it can uh, broadcast more things, and uh, if you are on the moon, uh, you might be on a little uh, uh, spaceship without a lot of power, then you don't want to, uh, to send communication uh, a lot. Then this is the motivation of one-way communication complexity that I only, uh, I, I only send a message from Alice to Bob. Now, there are several more uh, motivations for uh, one-way communication complexity. For example, uh, in, uh, for simplicity, uh, if you want to do several things on the net, it's easy to download a file from a server. But you don't want uh, to build a real server that will answer a question. To download, it's special. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, easy HTTP protocol and something like this, then to download it easy, but you don't want a connection in the other direction. Now, what we want to do now is that Alice have some document, TA, and Bob have document, TB, which, which are uh, the same, but there might be several mistakes. There might be several places that are different. We want to calculate the m in distance between TA and TB, but we will calculate it given that th there is a bound on the number of the mistake. If the number of mistakes are too high, then we say that it's all corrupted and uh, you need to download the file again or something like this. Can click again. Now, the second definition is using sketching. Uh, uh, it's as follows. I have, uh, again, several texts. It's not, it, it doesn't need to be T, A, and T, B. It can be more texts. And I want somehow to, to, to save uh, a snips. I want to save a, a, a sketch uh, uh, of uh, the text that will enable me, using two sketches, to compute the m in distance between T, T A, and T, B. I, I will run some function s on ta, and I will run some function s on tb. And from then on, I, will, uh, I won't look on ta and tb, and I will be able to calculate the m in distance between ta and tb uh, only with the sketches. And again, it's um, another click. And again, it's uh, with a bound on the number of uh, arrows. Uh, but here, I add uh, another property that uh, I, I want even to, f to find the mistakes, and I will be able to fix the mistakes. Then you can use it as some, uh, some uh, sophisticated error correcting code. Okay. Then motivations, there are a lot of motivation. I only put here uh, uh, three bullets. Uh, then in databases, there are several motivations you want you, you have a huge database, then you want to save some, something really small that you'll be able to answer several queries, 
then these sketches will be able you to, to answer the query efficiently with saving a little space. And actually, in databases, you can actually run a clustering algorithm using only the sketches. And another property of the sketches is that it will be faster to calculate the difference between document. If you have two real big document and you want to calculate the difference, you, want, you need to run over all the document. Now, to calculate the differ difference will be only something that will be close to linear on the sketch size. Then it it's really will be better a uh, better algorithm to do first sketches and then after it running clustering. Uh, in the internet, I already mentioned when you download things and you want to know that uh, it's okay or you want if it, even if it's not okay, you want to fix them as a mistake. Then there are several uh, internet uh, uh, application and now correcting you have a click uh, on these things. I want to talk about another uh, paradigm uh, that that is called streaming. Let's assume that I have several routers in this, like this uh, net. And now when I'm sending something, router A receives something and then send it forward it to router B. Router B receives all the things from router A and now he sent several of them to router C and several of them to router D. The thing with routers, they don't have a lot of mem memory. They can't uh, restore all the information that moves uh, uh, that moves you. Then, then I want somehow to be able to correct the mistake that was on this uh, edge without saving all the, all the information that was sent. And actually, our sketches will be able us to, to compute the sketches uh, on, uh, on real time, online. You see, you see element, you modify the sketches. And after it, I will be able to send only the sketch and compare between the sketch and, and fix the error. And after I fix the error, I can forward the correction to router C and router D. Then it's really good for correcting things in network. Okay. Then my talk would be uh, as follow. I give a lot of algorithms that are doing it. Uh, something that will start, will be a simple solution, but uh, will have more it it will it will need more memory and so and so on each uh, each algorithm here have a neat uh, technique that i want to show you then that's why i given all of this algorithm at the end if i have time i will i will show some something neat on file sharing then i will start with the simplest solution uh, then for simple solution i will talk about binary alphabet the alphabet is only 0, 1. After it, we will deal with, uh, uh, with any alphabet that you want. Then in the binary alphabet, you can click another click. I will al allocate k square cells. This is the cells. This is the document. And now, uh, each, uh, each element in the input array, I will ask for one cell. And in the cells, what I will keep I will keep the accumulate XOR of all the elements that are to the same cell. Another click. Then, for example, here are two documents, and these are the mistakes. Then you see that the M in distance between the cells is somehow related to the M in distance between the document. Question. Yeah. Are you hashing on, are you hashing on position or the contents? I, I hashing on position. Position. Each position, you see, you see each position as the same uh, as the same way. This, uh, oh, actually, it move here. Yeah, this value, it need to be this value. No, uh, it's this value. Yeah, it does move here. Uh, then this thing ash to here and this thing ash to here as well. It's the same ash. Okay. Uh, then, as you see here, that here I ash one mistake to here. Then the and here it was something different, then I have something here different. But another click. You see that here, I don't have something different. Why I don't have something different? Uh, I'm supposed to have something different, but I don't have because two mistakes are asked to the same position. But we will use, next click, we will use the birthday principle 
that will tell us that if we use k square cells with, with uh, probability less than half, uh, we will have two cells, two, two mistake cells that will add to the same place. Then it means that uh, with constant, with, uh, with more than half probability, we will succeed by having the correct time distance. But half probability is not enough, then to get better probability, we can run it several times. And you know, when you, when you have a mistake, it means that you will say something less than the correct value. Then if we take the maximum over all the run, we will, uh, we will get with, with really high probability, with probability, uh, with probability to fail delta, we will get uh, the correct answer. Okay? Yes? Then another click. Uh, then now I, I said to you that I talk about how to deal with general alphabet. Then this is the slide. Let's say that our alphabet is S. Uh, the size of the alphabet is S. We can easily encode each letter of the alphabet to onary. For example, 0 getting to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on. Now, another click. Now, after encoding that way, what it calls to us that our array will be, our input uh, text will be bigger, but actually, if you saw slide before, the complexity doesn't depend on the, on the size of the array. So it doesn't cause nothing. But now, the number of mistakes will be twice. You see, here's the difference between 0 and 5. It's this one and this one. Then we twice the number of the mistakes. Then, then the algorithm actually will have a constant of 4 uh, on the size, because we will seek for 2k mistakes and not k mistakes. OK? Then it's simple reduction. Now we'll talk about simple way to do error correcting. Then it's really the same, but now I won't keep bits. I will keep uh, numbers. I will keep two, two kinds of k square cells. I will keep the red kind and the blue kind. Another click. The red, uh, the red kind, it will be simply the sum of the element who ash to the same place. Actually, I do it modulo something, but I don't want to get into uh, the model thing, it, will, it need to be modulus some primes that bigger than uh, the alphabet size. Okay? Yeah, actually, it doesn't need to be prime here, but in the, after it, it will have to be prime. Uh, another click. Now, in the red cells, what I will save there will be not only the, I don't only uh, put here the element itself, I multiply the element by is index, by i. See, i, a, i. OK, what it will give us, then another click. Then, as before, with probability uh, more than half, no, there won't be two mistakes that map to the same cell, because it's k to the power of two cells. Another click. Now, let's say that there, there wasn't another arrow that, that mapped to these cells. Then. If you see that this 5 is add, added to here, and this 3 added to here, it doesn't need to be here 5 and 3, because there are other, other positions that added to here. But the difference between 8 and 6 must be equal to the difference between 5 and 3, yes? if it's one mistake that mapped to the same place. OK? Then now, uh, backward? It's, uh, it doesn't matter. Then now, no, it doesn't matter. The, the now I know the difference. If, if I will know the index of the mistake, I will know how to fix it. I will know that I need to, if I will know that I need to add here two to get the, the correction. Another click. But now how I will know the, the I will know the, the index. I will look about uh, on the blue cells. In the blue cells, I have five that map to here, three that map to here. But now it multiply by the index. Then I get here 11 uh, minus 9, it's equal to 2 times 5 minus 3, which these two become from, from the index. The index of these things is 2. OK? Then this way, 
I get the index. Other click. Now, for doing it with really uh, tiny arrows, we can run it three times, and then I will get a list of mistakes. But the, the, they can be uh, they can be an error that two mistakes map to the same cell. Then I will get only the, play, the mistakes that appear uh, at at least two of the three runs. Okay, the probability is that some error will occur twice. It's really it's really small. Oh, I do it really fast. Then this was a simple solution. Now I give a solution uh, about about measuring the distance as the first solution uh, that is based. By, uh, it it was invited by by Bar Yosef at all. Actually, Siva Kumar is at Google. Actually, Bar Yosef at Google. Uh, it might be the case that several other of them are at Google, but I don't know. Uh, the idea is based on on two-stage assay. What I will do, I will first ash each position to one of k over log k cell. You can tick. Now I will look on the mistakes. Each cell, another click, have with high probability of log k mistakes. Actually, the probability that each cell will have more than, let's say, 5 log k is exponentially small in k. Okay, then it's really high probability that each cell have off log A mistakes. Now another click. Now I take each cell and I will run something like the solution before. I will I will allocate off log to the power of, of two of K uh, cells and each of the thing here I will map to one of the cell and another click. The probability that I will have Two mistakes at the same cell is less than half. Another click. I will run it two log k time and take as before the maximum. Another click. Now the fair probability if I run it two, k, two log k time is one over k square. Because half it's it's even uh, less than one over k square uh, because half to the power of, of two log k it's one over k square. Okay. Another click. The space is of log, uh, log to the power of 3 of k because I have off log to the power of 2 of k cells and I write to log k times. Now the complexity of all of this is of k to the power of uh, k times log to the power of, k of 2 k. It's simply by multiply this I have k over log k cells. Click. And the further probability I have, uh, I can fail in each, in each uh, failure. Then I have k over log k opportunity to be fail. This is a union bound. Uh, each cell, the probability to fail is one over k to the power of two. Then the probability to, to fail is less than one over k. Then this sketch give me the distance between uh, between uh, any two sketches, I can compute the distance between the documents, and it uses only of k log to the power of two of k uh, memory. Okay, but this solution was due to uh, Zib by Yosef, Siva Kumar at all. Uh, improving that solution is is easily by using recursion, but it need to be calculate. Uh, uh, really carefully, because let's uh, another click. Let's uh, I separate it again to low k over low low k cells. It's by putting your k as low k, I get this number. And now I will run. Let's say that I run. I will run the algorithm before. But if I run the algorithm before, another click, another click, I will get a probability of one over log of k to the power of c of some constant c, but these things is really, it's really high probability to fail because I have several cells that I will fail uh, for sure. Then these things I will be, I will need to run several times. Another click, another, another. I will need to run it 
log k over log, log k uh, time to get actually a good probability to not fail. Uh, and overall, uh, if I run it in recursion, it, it's not so hard to calculate it. I will get this formula. The log star of k, it's the number of time I put, I, I, uh, I do log in order to get one. Then this thing is about five. Uh, then this is what I get. Any question on this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now is the, it, I can't call it the last solution because I have another improvement on this, but it, it's going to be uh, one for then. Uh, I, I show it as communication, one way communication complexity, but actually it can be shown as before as sketches. It, it's just the way to show it uh, better. Then click. Uh, I assume uh, global random, assuming global random is just taking some hash that known on advance, or if uh, I say that, that Alice on, uh, on Earth and Bob on uh, the moon, they both see the sun, and then they can take the random bit from the sun. Another click. They both choose a prime. They choose a prime deterministically. Then they choose a prime of order n to the power of 3 uh, s. n is the size. It needs to be small n. n is the size of the text. And s is the alphabet size. Another click. Now I choose, I take r in this, in this way. It means that. Uh, most of the ri's here will be zero. With probability one over k, ri will be something random between one to, to p, p minus one. But with i probability, with probability k minus one over k, it will be zero. Okay, then almost all the ri are zero. Now I compute this formula phi one of ta, and I compute here at both sides. Side, I put phi1 of Tb. And now I send, I click, I send phi1 of Ta to Bob. I click. Now you remember that most of the Ri are zeros. Now I have here three cases. I, I will look only on the place of the mistakes. And I ask myself, this mistake, what, what's the value of uh, the Ri in this position? If it's zero or not zero. If all the places that have mistakes have, is multiplied by zero, it means that the difference between phi1 uh, of ta and phi1 of tb will be zero because I multiply the mistake by zero and all the other places are really the same, then the, this value are the same. If one place of mistakes have some rj, that is not zero, and all the, the other uh, places have zero, then I will get these things that it's rj time aj minus bj. This is the case of one mistake. And if I get more than one mistake, if I have this mistake have some R, ri that not equal to zero, and this mistake have some ri that not equal to zero, I will get something random that I won't use. But another click. But with constant probability, uh, actually something that's a little greater than 1 over e, I will get this case. And what I'm going to do, I will going to use this case. Yeah, another click. Another click. Now I compute another uh, functional. It's a phi1 uh, prime, which is the same thing but I multiply it by i, as you, s you remember the error correction uh, simple uh, solution is the same. I multiply it by i. Now, when I multiply it by i and send it to the to Bob, I click. I will get here. Then, if if it was the case of one mistakes, then this thing equal to these things, and it's really equal to j, which j is the position of the mistake. But how I know that, uh, that 
I did these things and I don't use the random thing. Another click. If it was a random thing, with high probability, j will be greater than n. Why j will be greater than n? Because I do all the calculation modulo p. p is something that can, can get to n to the power of 3 times s. Then what is the probability that random calculation will be less than n? Because the, we have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of a number in between. Then from that, I get with high probability the position of the mistake. But from this algorithm, I got only one mistake. Yes, I got only j. I want to get several mistakes. And how I will do it? I click. Uh, this I get. I, I didn't say that from that I can get rj and aj minus bj and correct the mistake. I click. What I will do, I will need to run it off k land k time. Why I need to run it off k land k time? You can say. Yeah. The thing, okay. the thing is that I really sample the mistakes. It means that each time that I run it, I might get the same mistake as before. Actually, I will get it a lot of time the same, uh, the same thing. Then to get all the mistakes, it's it's called the Copen collector uh, problem. I need to run it k and k time. Okay. I click. I want to reduce the land kaiser. Then the way to reduce the land kaiser is as follow. I start by running the algorithm as before with Ri, as I told you, with probability one over k. It will be something random. It's not in zone zero. And I run it only some constants time k time. Now, after I done it, another click, I actually fixed some mistakes. And actually, I can show you that with really high probability, I fixed more than half the mistakes. Then if I fixed more than half the mistake, I can run it now in recursion when I set, another click, when I set Ri to be 2 over k, because I have only half of the mistake. 2 over k is 1 over uh, half k. Okay, and now another click. Now I run it only because it's on recursion. I now run it only ck over two times because my k is now k over two. Then another click. Then overall, you can see that I run it ck, ck over two, ck over four, and so on and so on. Another click. Then I run it less than two ck times. Okay. Then the sketch size is O of k log n uh, s. Why is the log n s? Uh, why is the log n s? Because each time I transmit log n s bits, I transmit some number that is bound by p, and p is n to the power of three times s. Okay. Uh, and actually, uh, as I said, the size is O of k log n s. Uh, computing the sketches, it's really, we can do it uh, online in real time. Uh, we get, if we get each element uh, one by one, I can compute it in O of n log k time, which is really fast. Uh, and comparing sketching is really, really fast. It doesn't depend on n itself. It costs me O of k log k. Then if I want to run the, after it's sketching a, a clustering algorithm, which somehow compare all, all the pair, I won't have another factor of n. I will have a factor of k, which is smaller. Okay. Now, if I want only to know the distance and not to calc and, and not to fix the mistakes, I can easily do it. I can easily reduce the O of k log n uh, s to O of k log k by simply uh, take the array and hash it to k to the power of three cells. As before, after I hash it to k to the power of two cells, I have probability of half that two cells, that two mis uh, mistake will be in the same cell. But if I hash it to k to the power of three, the probability of collision, that two mistakes will be at the same place, uh, is smaller. But now my text size n will be k, and actually I can 
H זה, זה alphabet as well. Uh, actually, I can do the unary code and then hashing, uh, and then I get of k log k algorithm. Yeah, oh. uh, this slide is with a lot of references. Uh, actually, all of this technique uh, can be deterministically by using something like Red Salomon codes. Uh, the thing with the Red Salomon code is that it, uh, it will actually take about the same size. Uh, but the thing with uh, the Red Salomon code is that the encoding and decoding will take more time. And actually, the decoding of Red Salomon code, uh, actually, uh, actually uh, Amir and Faraj and uh, Fingenboom, Ishai, Malkin, Nisim, Stort, uh, and so on, uh, already uh, saw that, and Zibber Yosef at all. Uh, but we managed in uh, 2006, uh, me and uh, two students of mine, we managed to do it uh, really fast, uh, randomly. Uh, the algorithm all of other uh, give it's deterministically. We do it really, really fast randomly by using in Red Salomon uh, in Red Salomon code you use until k here and not 2k. Then we use uh, until 2k and we use uh, something from uh, coding theory that called Belkan Messi technique. Uh, and in 2007 we managed to do it even deterministically, but actually it has several log factor that uh, cost more than technique, the technique before. Uh, the deterministic algorithm is really nice because it includes some technique of factor in uh, polynomial uh, deterministically. Yeah. Now about file sharing. Now file sharing, I will start with Snapster. Another click. In your calculations up until now, you're completely agnostic to the what the probability of error. Uh, in the paper, it's appear oh, yeah. uh, the probability you can reduce it as as what you want, uh, uh, and it cost uh, uh, by repeating it. But actually, all the all the place that I put only k dependence, it w it wasn't dependent on n. It's something that it's it's polynomial uh, of one over k. The the probability of error, and all the places that was uh, n, the probability of error is something that polynomial of one over n. It can be one over n to the power of two, and so on. Now, it's somehow uh, the same the same technique that I will do to file sharing. Uh, in file sharing, uh, let's start with Napster, which I think was the first. Then Napster, the problem with that was legal, but another problem with that uh, is that we have some source, and several people download from the source, the source, and they download from the beginning until the end. It might be the case that the source really gave a lot of information, as you see, it gave to a lot of users, but it left before even one of the users completes the file. <laughs> so now you can't open the file. You can not see the movie. I don't know what. Uh, I click. Then. We have a problem that the source needs to stay uh, until someone will uh, have the whole file. Then we need the source to be willing to stay, another click. And we have a problem with bottleneck that even if the source is staying, it might be the case that a lot of uh, users ask the same uh, bucket. Then they, uh, they have bottleneck here. Another click. Another click. Now, in Emule, Casa, and Torrent, they have some heuristics, but actually you can see it as, you can see it because uh, the network we can analyze as worst case and, so, and things like this. Then, then it might be the case that, that, that uh, each user ask uh, some uh, bucket, it's at, uh, it's ask some bucket at random. When each uh, user asks some bucket at random, then actually it might be the same case that all of the users don't have the same bucket. 
uh, and there is a problem. It's a problem of bottleneck and a problem uh, of uh, not having the whole file, but it's less than uh, what was before. And another click. Another click. Then actually the source uh, to calculate how many packets you need to send, you need to send n and n packet as before the copen collect collecting problem in order that someone, uh, not someone, in order that in the network you will have all the file. It's not meaning that someone will have the, all the file. It's meaning that after you send n and n packet and leave, somehow they can gather together and have all the file. Okay. Now, to improve this file sharing, we can use the following version. It's the version number one. Okay. Uh, actually, you don't know it that AI is not bit. It's, it can be a, blo a block of bits. Click. I'm looking on uh, AI, uh, on, on these things as a polynomial, A0 plus A1x, and so on. Uh, and now, in polynomial, I can put as value of the polynomial which values that I want. I put 0, 1, 2, until even n to the power of 6. Now, the thing with polynomial, I have here a lot of points. But if I have n point of this set, I will be able to reconstruct the polynomial. Then it means that I don't need exactly to have this point. I can take and exchange this point. I don't need to have special point. Then there are less bottleneck. And with higher probability, uh, I will have really fast all the, uh, all the information in the network. Click. Then now I somehow get from this file something really bigger. And each user downloads something. And you, you see that with high probability, the they won't have uh, the same thing. That each user can, can give something new to another user. And, and then each user doesn't need to download all the n to the power of 6. It can uh, download only n point and reconstruct the file from the n point. Because polynomial can construct by n point. Polynomial of degree n minus 1. Uh, another click. Then now there are no more the n and n, and there is less uh, bottleneck. Okay. Uh, version two of the that thing. This was like the Red Solomon uh, solution, which I didn't get got into here. Uh, but this solution is based on the improved solution for the sketching. Uh, click. What I will do. Click. I will send linear equation on the file. I will take these things and let's say XOR to these things. Actually, I won't do XOR. I will do. Uh, I will multiply. I will take these things and add twice these things and add five times these things and so on. Click. Then I have something a matrix like this that I I I took each value and multiply by some random thing. Click. Uh, and you can see uh, that there is a, a theorem on this field that the probability that this matrix will be dependent, if I have n row uh, and n column, it's really small. It depends on the field side. But if the field is big enough, even if the field is uh, f2 to the 10, that it means that I get only 10 bit uh, in each packet it will be really small. It will be 1 to 5, uh, 1, to the, uh, 1 over uh, 2 to the power of uh, 9. So not uh, dependent, to be dependent. Uh, that it means that each, each user need to get only n function in order to reconstruct the file. And how I reconstruct a file? By simply solving this system. Click. Then I have several problems with this solution. 
the first problem is that it's really heavy to, to encode the packet because each packet, I will need to go over all the file and, and take these things and multiply by something, take these things and multiply by something else, and so on. I will have to go all the file and, and uh, do a calculation. Then it will be really heavy to encode this file. Then I can't really implement it. Another click. The decoding is easy, is heavy as well. It involves O of n to the power of 2 uh, block uh, operation, which is really heavy. And O of n to the power of 3 field operation, which is less heavy, but n to the power of 3 is heavy as well. Click. Uh, then now several facts that, I, I, that do it uh, more easier. Then uh, the fact that uh, if we take only a combination of two blocks, I will choose one block at random. Let's choose this block and this block. And now I, I just put a combination of them. Then with, I, with really high probability, if I get a lot of this, uh, these pairs, uh, they won't be dependent. Then I can really encode uh, I can really encode really fast most of the packet. And even after I encode things uh, that use a uh, two block and I get to this uh, bound, I can take now block of three element. And uh, there is another blind for block of three element and then four and so on. Then it won't take a lot of time to encode. Uh, click. Uh, and actually, this way of encoding give me a way to decode really fast. Because actually, if the matrix is sparse, I can really solve it fast. Then uh, by sparse thing, I can uh, really uh, do it. Click. Uh, using sparse fu uh, functionals. Click. Uh, now, we really choose, we actually implement these things. And we really choose uh, this version because the following features. First feature is backward uh, completability. If we we do it for torrent, then now if you have a regular torrent client who sending your packet, then you can look about it as functional of one. It it won't uh, it, it won't help to gain more than really regular torrent, but if you download, you can download from client that working like you and you can download from regular cli uh, torrent client because you will use it as only functional if you get the block A5, use it as functional that say uh, R5 is one and all other uh, things are zero. Then it's a backward comp computability. Right click. Uh, another feature of this technique and not the Red Salomon code, uh, uh, like technique uh, is the thing that I can mix, mix the functionals before I get all the file. Uh, in the Red Salomon technique, if you get a point, and let's say you have even n minus one point, you, you can't recreate the file. And if you can't recreate the file, you can't, uh, you can't calculate another point. Here, if I have two functionals, I can solve them, or I can add someone to another time some constant. Then I can mix functionals, and this gives me the ability not to need to control the communication. If I send someone to, to something to someone, I, I don't want to get it back. And if I, I saw functionals with high probability, I will gain always a new, a new block. Then this is a really good feature. Uh, actually, we still didn't uh, give something to download, but uh, actually it have a really great feature of this torrent because it's like a virus, it will spread. Because uh, let's, for example, I will uh, somehow get 10% uh, of the po population to use my torrent uh, client. Then it means that all the other population can't download from them, but they can download from you. Then now more people want uh, to get uh, the new torrent uh, client. And actually the new torrent client, it's, it's really have 
some algorithm point of view that will download quickly. Then, not that even more than the, it's better in algorithm point of view. It's better because it uh, will spread like a virus. Because if a lot of people will download it, then a lot of people will want to download it. Then, uh, actually, if you want uh, this client, uh, you can send me an email. I don't know if it will be in the few uh, months from now or uh, maybe in the next year that we will release. Uh, we, I don't know if we will put it in as open source or not because we don't want some hackers to to put several things that will ruin uh, our communication. <laughs> but uh, we might put it uh, as a library that you will be able to connect and put a GUI of your own. So that's all. You have a question? How does this relate to network coding, the literature on network coding? And Actually, I'm not from network, and I'm not from coding. I'm from algorithms. And I don't really know. Um, because there's a, I mean, Microsoft research has been yeah, working I, on. I actually saw it only now. Uh, Jacob showed it to me. Actually, I saw research by Microsoft that it's somehow related to that. Uh, but uh, they actually published it, I think, in uh, Infocom 2005. I only saw it uh, uh, now, Jacob uh, saw me. But after I saw, saw that, I, I talked talk with uh, Siva Kumar, and he showed me something from 2002 that was before and really contained the Microsoft things. And I, can, I, I don't think that uh, Microsoft can uh, do a patent on things like this because there was something before. Uh, oh, sure. And, I mean, uh, the, there's a huge amount of work that's happened in network coding, so I'm not saying that Microsoft research has done it. No, well. the problem with Microsoft, it might be the case that they put in patent on things, and then you can't uh, really use it. But uh, you should look at um, some of the work that Kamal Jan, he's in the theory community, so. I will be happy to look at it. But and, uh, this is not my field of expertise. I, I mean, only they have this, uh, I, so, um, I only see that because it related to my algorithm. You see that it's really, you, you see that it's really the same technique as my algorithm, and the version one it's really the same technique as another algorithm that I published. That I said to you that it, it based on a Red Salomon code. Right. Then I guess really what I'm saying is that um, these. Uh, Particularly that Infocom 2005 work, it, it does solve some different problems, but um, they, are, they are putting this in the update client, so the Windows update when you go and pull new binaries instead of I, I really pulling all know. from the server, you'll have it. So they are quite a, uh, they have made quite a bit of progress uh, in using network coding, in, mm -hmm. and you seem to be reinventing some of that. So it might Exactly. Might be the case. Uh, this part of the presentation, uh, uh, the, all, the algorithm itself we developed around 2002-2003. Actually, we, we only now publish it. Uh, oh, I'm sure. But, I'm sure there are significant events no, of that, but the, I'm that. No, but the file sharing algorithm, I don't think that, from my point of view as a theoretical, I don't think that it was publishing, because it's not theoretical. It's uh, then we didn't enter it to the paper at all. It's just for teaser for the for the talk. Okay, another question. Okay, is that all?